You're watching Let the Quran Speak. A new study links non-abusive physical punishment of children with mental and personality disorders and drug and alcohol abuse. Should we take this study seriously? What strategies can be used to discipline children? And is it possible to teach them to discern right from wrong without physical punishment? Here with me, Brother Shabir Ali, to discuss uh, the study. I, I don't know if you've actually seen the study. It's in a magazine called Pediatrics. And it was done on, uh, on adults in the United States. And this is what it found. Yes, I've read some reports about the findings, though I didn't uh, go through the details of the entire uh, study. But because it's coming from the uh, American Pediatrics Association, so uh, that that obviously um, uh, gives me reason to believe in in the uh, results of the of the findings. Uh, of course, with, with such studies, uh, one can never be absolutely definitive uh, mm -hmm. because a new study may may uh, point to another sort of correlation. And uh, we use the term correlation rather than causation because uh, when we say that uh, you know this happened and also this happened and the two seem to happen together, it's not clear if one is necessarily the cause of the other. In fact, it is known that uh, mental disorders are caused by a wide variety of uh, of contributing causes often mm -hmm. and uh, the most we can say about such a study is that is it establishes a correlation between uh, as you said non-abusive physical punishment and uh, and mental disorders it may be then one of the contributing factors and uh, because it may be one of the contributing factors as uh, indicated by this study I, I, I believe that uh, it would be useful for Muslim parents in particular and parents more generally to pay close attention to that study and to look for ways of uh, molding and persuading their children to do what is right uh, without uh, resorting to uh, physical punishment, even uh, what would be termed non-abusive uh, physical punishment. Mm -hmm. Now, on, on the other hand, there, w there was a study that found that 70% or approximately 70% of Canadians believe that you know, spanking your child is acceptable or is a good form of discipline in some circumstances. And then there are other people who say, well, look at the children today and look at the way they behave. Perhaps, you know, they need to be disciplined in that way. So what are, what are your thoughts on that comment? How can you discipline your children without spanking? Are, are there good ways um, or good methods of doing so? There is no easy answer to this. Uh, on the one hand, many of us uh, can remember that, that in childhood we were dealt with in a physical way. Mm -hmm. And uh, we may relate th that to our good uh, upbringing and, and the, the, our success in life. We can trace back to the fact that our behavior at a certain time was uh, corrected due to some kind of physical uh, intervention on the part of our parents. Uh, so, so this is fine for us. It worked well for us, but uh, it, it, such findings which uh, study people across the board go past this kind of anecdotal evidence which says this happened in my case to what happened across the board. What about uh, the failures as well? So we, we take into consideration not only the successes but also the failures and then we see how things are correlated in that way. So well, it, it is difficult sometimes for parents to get past this uh, feeling that well it worked for me why mm -hmm. couldn't it work for my child? Well mm -hmm. the answer is that it may work for your child but maybe work against your child as well and you don't know that until you see the results in, in the long run. Mm -hmm. the, the so how, would we, how should we think of discipline then? I mean sometimes people think of discipline as punishment, punishing a child for something but there are other ways of thinking about it. For example um, redirecting a child or uh, corrective sort of um, discipline that, that isn't necessarily hitting a child. Um, perhaps you can think of other ways. Yes, of course, uh, one, one can take, uh, one can use timeouts. Uh, the child is involved in some activity and uh, the um, a child is uh, behaving inappropriately in that situation. So you can call for a timeout so the activity stops or you can uh, remove the child from that uh, situation so the child gets the sense that something here uh, has been disruptive. Um, but uh, the, the problem with the spanking or, or, or some other forms of physical uh, um, discipline is that uh, the child may not uh, quite understand uh, what the intervention is doing and the child may associate that, that physical discipline uh, with the anger of the parent or 
um, the, the child may just simply uh, learn that if you want to get your way or do some or, or get something done the way you want it, uh, you intervene physically, just like the parent intervened uh, physically mm -hmm. in that in that situation. Uh, we, we should also stress the other side of, of, of discipline, which is what do you do before discipline? A, a lot of parents sit back, do nothing, and then they only intervene when they see the child is doing something wrong. Well, why didn't you intervene when you saw, saw the child doing something right? Mm -hmm. uh, compliment the child, uh, let the child know that they have done something right and that is appreciated. Mm -hmm. So this can also be a way of disciplining a child, right? Uh, uh, proactively, yes. of course, uh, you know, creating this kind of atmosphere where the child loves to do something good because when the child does something good, the child sees the appreciation from the part of the parents and the appreciation doesn't necessarily mean buying expensive gifts, uh, but it could be just simply thank you, you did that well, or I was really proud of you when you did that, or I was very happy when you did that, so that's very good, that's excellent marvelous and so on uh, we should become accustomed to giving compliments uh, to the kids mm -hmm. is there any way that we can associate doing good with God so that so an individual a child uh, wants to do good because he or she wants to please God perhaps. yeah so often we, we uh, create we focus on the relationship between the child and parent mm -hmm. we say I'm your parent I told you this and therefore you have to do it but uh, if we uh, include God in the picture then it doesn't seem so self-centered on the parent anymore you know it's not that this you know I'm telling you you have to listen to me because I'm the parent both you and me we are responsible to God who created us for a purpose and we have to fulfill that purpose and if we fulfill that purpose we have all of these rewards with God. So now it's up to the child to fulfill that purpose. Uh, if the child uh, um, buys into this idea and say, yeah, that's great. I want to please God. I want to go to heaven. I want to enjoy all of the beautiful things in paradise. Uh, I, I want to be successful and I want God to be happy with me. Well, in that case, the parent doesn't even need to be around to supervise the child. The child will self-supervise knowing that God is the ultimate supervisor of both uh, parent and child. Mm -hmm. But how can we get a child to, to, to understand this concept from a young age? At what age do you think a, a child can understand? The I think we can, we can start very young because uh, children have greater imagination that par than parents have mm. and children like to imagine far off and distant places, mythical places even. Uh, so if we talk to uh, children about paradise uh, as this marvelous place which is real, uh, though it sounds to many adults to be mythical, uh, then the child will actually uh, grow up uh, wanting to be in that place and to enjoy all of the things. Of course we should try to relate the things of paradise and life in paradise to uh, the beautiful things that we experience in this life. So if children enjoy toys, uh, then we should talk about paradise being a place that has all kinds of pleasure, the same kinds of pleasure that you get from toys. In fact, the Quran says that they will have therein whatever they desire. So we don't know until we get there what we'll desire. But if you want toys, well then that's the place to get all of the toys that you want. So if, if we do explain to children that this is the, the desired goal, then uh, this is a way of proactively disciplining the child, not waiting for the child to do something wrong, but channeling the child's thoughts to doing uh, things which are right. All right. Are there any final thoughts that you want you, you want to convey on this? Well, I, I'd like to add uh, the results of another study that I came to be acquainted with over the weekend. Uh, the um, a study out of the United States, a PhD uh, work, which showed that uh, when, when fathers play with their kids, this actually um, contributes to the um, mental well-being uh, of, of the children. And it's interesting that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did in fact uh, 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 tell fathers to spend time with their children uh, and uh, there is a famous hadith which says that you should uh, play with your children uh, for seven years and then teach them for seven years and then befriend them for seven years and uh, often fathers do not play with the children because the fathers are busy but we need to take time out and uh, and give quality time to the children. All right we'll leave it at that thank you for your time. You're welcome. We'll take a break when we return we answer questions we've received from you our viewers. <laughs>